Hello everybody, welcome back to the Traction YouTube channel. Now in today's video we're going to talk about brake bias or brake balance as it's sometimes referred to. What is it, what does it do and how can you adjust it to suit you? Now some people set and forget the brake bias, some people don't touch it at all. But by not adjusting the brake bias you might not be using the braking system as effectively as you could be. So firstly, what is brake bias? Well, brake bias is a percentage number which tells you how the braking is distributed between the front and rear wheels. So a 50% brake bias would mean that the same braking forces are applied to the front and rear. Any number above 50% means that the front wheels are doing more braking and below 50% means that there's more braking done at the rear of the car. So on my track guides this season here on Traction, they have been in a fixed series and one of the only adjustments you can make is to brake bias. Now, I have done quite a bit of testing on each of those track guides and found a happy medium, a brake bias, which people could run with without having to adjust during the race. But in reality, you could have to make several adjustments to the brake bias per lap to find the time that you could be missing out on. So I thought the best way to demonstrate brake bias is with a somewhat exaggerated practical demonstration. So let's get on track. So here we are then on track in the beautiful Ferrari 488 GT3. Now I've chosen this car because it's used in the fixed Ferrari series on iRacing and one of the only adjustments you can make is to brake bias. We've also chosen the Red Bull ring. I think this is a perfect track to show off what brake bias does and what it can do. It's got a mixture of turns, some really heavy braking areas in a straight line and also some other turns where you've got to trail brake quite a bit and carry as much speed as you can through the turn. Now, if you look in the bottom right of the screen, now you can see my brake pressure bias number there. So currently, out of the box on the medium downforce sprint, it's set to 52.1. Now I've got my brake bias set to a rotary encoder on my wheel. If you can set it to one of those or a button, or if you don't have a button box or a wheel with any buttons on it, then make sure you've got your keyboard and mouse to hand so you can adjust it during the race. Now, if I turn my dial down to the left it goes all the way down and if I turn it all the way up to the right it goes all the way up so as I mentioned in the intro so if you have it 50% there it's 50.1 we can't go any closer than that that means that there's an equal amount of braking distributed between the front and rear wheels the higher the number means that there's more braking done at the front the lower the number means that there's more braking done at the rear now, the best thing we can do is jump in the car. I'll try and explain what happens to the car when you're braking and how the changes to brake bias can make your life a little bit easier. So, we've got to think what happens to the car when we brake. Now, it's the same with any vehicle that when you brake, but especially it's magnified even more in a race car because they are faster, the brakes are bigger. When you accelerate, all of the weight is transferred backwards, so there's more weight on the rear tyres. And when you brake, all of the weight is transferred forwards, so there's more weight on the front tyres. So the rear of the car raises up slightly, it's really light, so if you've got more braking at the rear, it's more prone to lock up. But the front of the car is heavier, the front tyres are pushed really hard into the tarmac, which means you've got more grip. Now you've got to think that the vehicle only wants to do one thing at a time, it either wants to accelerate it wants to brake or it wants to steer if you add more than one thing into that equation then you've got to make some compromises so if you've got more steering angle on then you can't accelerate as hard if you're braking really heavily you can't turn in as sharply because the car will understeer or if you're turning in then you can't brake as hard you've got to make compromises and as sim racers as drivers we do this constantly without realizing it subconscious that we do it we just don't want to throw ourselves off track and we are making adjustments all the time based on what the car's doing now what you can do is you can add brake bias adjustments into that equation just to make your life a little bit easier and make it less likely that you're going to spin and also increase your lap times by making the car more stable and giving you a shorter braking distances so here at the red bull ring I would probably make three, maybe four adjustments to the brake bias as we're going round. Um, for the heavy braking areas in a straight line, I would dial that number down. And for the braking zones where we are trail braking, where the speeds are a little bit higher, we'd probably dial that number up. Now, just because the number's lower, it doesn't mean to say that you, you're always going to get it stopped and turned. Because when the number's lower, that means that 
the front tyres aren't being buried into the road surface as much as they could be so you're not going to have as much grip I'll try and demonstrate that a little bit later so for turn number one here at the Red Bull ring I'd probably go somewhere in the middle I'd probably use 52 and a half because we're not trail breaking all the way to the apex here this is a turn where you need to carry quite a bit of speed through and you get on the gas just before the apex there so you don't really need really low braking um, brake pressure bias at that point but for turn number two I'd probably dial that number all the way down so there's more braking being done by the rear wheels to be honest because we're not going to be needing that bite on the front tires for turning because the speed is going to be lower and all we're thinking about doing is get the car stopped there in the shortest distance we possibly can now for the ne next series of turns there's one two three five turns here four four turns where we're braking i would dial this number up to about 53.8 here for this one because we need the grip here on the front tires we need it to to dig in at this point to get us to the apex so we accelerate out same with this next section of turns we want loads of grip on the front we want the car to be nice and planted we don't want the car to be oversteering at that point on corner entry same with this one this is a really tricky turn this one we're braking initially quite heavy there in the late apex this one we're not braking but for this next right turn i would probably go up one click more because the speeds are greater the the shift in mass is a little bit more exaggerated and then i would just leave it on for this last turn here so again turn one we dial that number down to 52 and a half again because we're not trailing all the way to the apex we're just trying to carry quite a bit of speed through this turn so we're not really worried about the the rear of the car over rotating because we're not braking at the critical point but here get this brake bias all the way down 49.4 want the car to be braking in as short a distance as we possibly can there 49.4 got it stopped really easy there braking at the 100 but again we need that number back up here 53.8 we were want the front of the car to be pushed right into the road surface and there turns nice and easy no hints of oversteer there from the rear on corner entry just leave it as it is for this section of turns and again this next corner is critical this is one that people over rotate on so much because the initial braking zone or braking area is so sharp such heavy braking initially but again because the speeds increase the shift in mass is more pronounced we dial that number up just to give us a little bit of breathing room just so it's not likely to over rotate on corner entry there so what happens when you have the brake bias wrong so for this turn here the only way you could go wrong really is having it down probably too much you would still get it stopped and we're not really trail braking there for, for turns like that it's not really going to have a massive impact you just need to find a place where or a, a braking a brake bias which gets you stopped where you need to get it stopped every lap so for this one if we if the number was greater here we wouldn't get it stopped in the same distance although we could trail brake to the apex and we'd have loads of grip but that's not what we're interested in for that turn so for this next one it's a long straight down to this turn you would think that a lower brake bias would get this get the car stopped in the same distance yes it would but because we're trail braking to the apex it doesn't turn because the number is lower it means that the front of the car or the car isn't pitched the same and the front of the car isn't fired into the road surface so we're not getting that bite that we would get if the brake bias number is higher same with these turns here these are really critical for a higher brake bias here if we brake like we normally would here going into this one it's quite aggressively there the car over rotates and there wasn't a hint of that when the brake bias was higher so it's really important just because the brake bias is lower doesn't mean to say that you're gonna get it stopped and turned so there you can see 
over rotated on the corner two or three corners before brake bias lower it just wouldn't turn because we didn't have that bite on the front tires i hope that makes sense so again it's just a case of finding what works for you really so you need the bite on the front tires when you're trail braking and you need the rear of the car to be braking as much as the front if not more in the braking zones where it's a straight line and you're not going to be doing more than one thing at one time with the car so there we go hopefully this little guide helps you understand brake bias a little bit better and what it does when you're driving around the circuit if there's anything that you're unsure of please let me know in the comments below and i will answer those specifically if i can as always thank you for watching keep it pinned see you later cheers